Good morning and welcome to St. John's, especially if you're worshipping with us for the first time. Um, welcome to you who are worshipping with us online as well. Um, please join us for tea and coffee afterwards. There's biscuits as well. There's even iced rings this morning, so there's a, an incentive to stay behind. Um, in relation to all the, any of the information that you need to know, it's all in the newsletter at the moment. So if you haven't got a copy of the newsletter, please see uh, Warden Nicola at the back of the church, and I'm sure we can sort that out for you. Um, just one reminder, there is tonight at 5.30, the second in our Lenten lectures, um, concerning the great icons of the great feasts, as you can see around the side of the church. Please take a chance, uh, time to have a look at them if you haven't seen them before. The lecture itself is given by Dr. David Wolf, who's an expert in the subject, and it was very, very good. It'll be followed by benediction. It's about 40 minutes all in all. I would certainly encourage you to come along. We, went, we learnt an awful lot last week. Now, the main reason I'm doing the notices this morning is the fact that, amongst other things, I'm the electoral roll officer for the parish as well. Um, it's that time of year again. We don't need to do a whole roll. It's only a, not a, just a revision, essentially. So, if you are on the electoral roll for this parish, at this moment in time, you have to do absolutely nothing. So, don't worry about it. Um, if you don't know whether you're on the roll, there is a sanitised version at the back on the table with the electoral roll forms. If your name's on it, you're on the roll. If it's not, then you're going to need one of these, which is the new electoral roll form. On the back, through some wizardry I've managed to sort out, is that we have a um, consent form as well in relation to your personal information for GDPR purposes. So if you want to join the electoral roll, that's there. If you want to not join the electoral roll, but just give us your contact details to be included on the newsletter, emails, that sort of thing, fill out the back. When you've done so, please post it, my little red friend here. Um, this one here has got a lock on the back, so it's secure. I only have the key, so don't worry about your personal information in relation to that. It would be helpful if you did put them in there. At least I know where they all are and know that nothing gets lost. Okay, and it's... Uh, Getting on towards 10.30, so I shall get out of your way and leave you to prepare for Mass. Thank you. In order for it helps you to prepare for Mass, the first hymn is number 439. 439, Praise to the Holiest in the Heights.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to St. John's. We come together to celebrate the two great sacraments instituted by our blessed Lord himself. The sacrament of baptism. We shall be baptizing Jemima in the course of this service. And the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, in which Christ gives himself to us in bread and wine. So as we come together to do these great things, let us call to mind and confess our sins. We say together words on the white card. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of the covenant, your presence fills us with awe. Your word gives us unshakable hope. Fix in our hearts the image of your Son in glory that sustained on the path of discipleship we may pass over with him to newness of life. Grant this through Christ, our deliverance and hope, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, holy and mighty God, forever and ever. Amen. We sit now to listen to the scriptures. The first reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 15. Taking Abram outside, the Lord said, Look up to heaven and count the stars, if you can. Such will be the, your descendants, he told him. Abraham put his faith in the Lord, who counted this and made him justified. I am the Lord, he said who brought you out of Ur and to the Chaldeans to make you your heir and to this land to be yours. My Lord, the Lord Abraham said, how am I to know that I am in to inherit it? He said to him, 
Get me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought them to the Lord and cut them in half and put them on one side and half facing it on the other. But the birds he did not cut in half. The birds of prey came down upon the carcasses, but Abraham drove them away. Now as the sun was setting, Abraham fell into a deep sleep, and terror seized him. When the sun had set and darkness had fallen, there appeared a smoking furnace and a firebrand that went between the halves. That day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham in these terms. To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, the Lord is my light and my help. The Lord is my light and my help. The Lord is my light and my help. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I shrink? The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my light and, and my help. help. The Lord, hear my voice when I call. Have mercy and answer. Of you my heart has spoken. Seek his face. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my, my light and, and my help. help. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. Dismiss not your servant in anger. You have been my help. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my light and my help. I am, I, I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him. Hold firm and take heart. Hope in the Lord. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my light, light and, and my, my help. help. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. My brothers, be united in following my rule of life. Take as your models everybody who is already doing this and study them as you used to study us. I have told you often and I repeat it today with tears. There are many who are behaving as the enemies of the cross of Christ. They are destined to be lost. They make foods into their God, and they are proudest of something they ought to think shameful. The things they think important are earthly things. For us, our homeland is in heaven, and from heaven comes the saviour we are waiting for, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will transfigure those wretched bodies of ours into copies of his glorious body. He will do that by the same power with which he can subdue the whole universe. So then, my brothers and dear friends, do not give way, but remain faithful in the Lord. I miss you very much, dear friends. You are my joy and my crown. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Create for me, O God, put a steadfast spirit within me. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke.
Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter did not know what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my Son, my Chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And the disciples kept silent. And in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please sit down. The disciples accompanying Jesus on the way to Jerusalem do not want to hear what he has to tell them. He has told them that he is on his way to suffer, to die, and to rise again. They simply don't want to know. So the Lord dramatically challenges them to open their ears and listen. He is transfigured in their sight. And a voice from heaven cries out, listen to him, listen to him. God promises to us more than we could ever imagine an infinity of joy and utter freedom. Abraham, in the first reading, is promised descendants as many as the stars of heaven. But God's promises leave no one unchanged. Abraham is enveloped in darkness and his life is bound by covenant to God, the creator of those very stars, and he loses tight control of his life. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem to make his exodus into a freedom which infinitely transcends that given to Israel when she left the bondage of Egypt. He invites the disciples to accompany him freely on this journey out of the bondage of sin and death. But like the rest of us, they are afraid. For I may long for that infinity of love which is God's own life, but I also fear its fire. 
I thirst for God's unbounded freedom, but freedom is frightening. Dostoevsky tells the story of the Grand Inquisitor who asserts that nothing has ever been more insufferable for humanity and society than freedom. In the end, they will lay their freedom at our feet and say to us, better that you enslave us, but feed us. The writer Annie Dillard claimed that listening to the gospel is the most risky thing one can do. Hear her. The churches are children playing on the floor with their chemistry sets, mixing, mixing up a batch of TNT to kill on Sunday morning. It is madness to wear ladies' straw hats and velvet hats to church, not that I see many hats these days, but we should all be wearing crash helmets. Ushers should issue life preservers and signal flares. Dangerous stuff, the gospel. So I pray that this Lent we may open our ears to the word of God. Hearing its promise, may we have the courage to embrace the transformation that it brings. The final words of the gospel reading this morning are almost chilling. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. Jesus, who had been seen conversing with Moses and Elijah, and whose father cried out from heaven, is again found alone. We listen to these words as a community in shared attention or distraction, but we also hear them alone as words addressed to each one of us, invited on a journey into personal freedom, one for us in our baptism, that no one else can take for us. Listening to the word, each of us is alone with the alone. Like the disciples, we need silence to digest their import. Yet they do not travel to Jerusalem alone. They walk with the Lord and each other. Our journey is always towards the shared freedom and joy of the kingdom for which we struggle now. Embracing freedom is costly as the people of the Ukraine are showing us. Refusing to submit to tyranny, tyranny, their freedom is ultimately inseparable from our own. If we support the cause of freedom, even though it is but a tiny foretaste of what is promised to us through our baptism, it will be costly for us too. Let's weigh the cost and set out. Now I invite Jemima and her parents and the godparents to come and join me here. And you now need your yellow cards. But please remain seated apart from parents and godparents. And I invite you all to join in with the responses that are in bold type on these cards. 
Faith is the gift of God to his people. In baptism, the Lord is adding to our number those whom he is calling. People of God, will you welcome this child and uphold her in her new life in Christ? Parents and godparents, the church receives this child with joy. Today, we are trusting God for her growth in faith. Will you pray for her? Draw her by your example into the community of faith and walk with her in the way of Christ. In baptism, this child begins her journey in faith. You speak for her today. Will you care for her and help her to take her place within the life and worship of Christ's church? With the help of God, we will. Now, will you all stand, please, and join in these promises? In baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore I ask, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbour? Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? Do you submit to Christ as Lord? Do you come to Christ, the way, the truth and the life? And now we make the sign of the cross, using the oil of baptism on Jemima's forehead. Christ claims you as his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Now I'm going to invite all the parents, and both parents and godparents, come and make trace the sign of the cross on her forehead for her Christian Formation is our joint responsibilities. Please trace the sign of the cross. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly as a disciple of Christ against sin of the world and the devil and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. May Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness, restore in you the image of his glory and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. Now, you have to use your imagination at this point in the liturgy. You have to imagine a vast quantity of water. You have to imagine enough water to drown in. Because in baptism we are dying to ourselves so that we may rise to be with Christ. As St. Paul says, it's not I that lives, it's Christ that lives in me. And in this sacrament, Jemima is admitted to the mystical body of Christ. So, praise God who made heaven and earth. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water to sustain, 
refresh and cleanse all life. Over water the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through water you led the children of Israel from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the promised land. In water your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us from the death of sin to newness of life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we baptise into his fellowship those who come to him in faith. Now, sanctify this water. That by the power of your Holy Spirit, she may be baptised, cleansed from sin and born again. Renewed in your image, may she walk by the light of faith and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess together the faith of the Church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was also seen by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered by the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the want to bring Jemima forwards? Jemima, I baptise you Ready? in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And now, having baptised her, we anoint her with holy oil, the oil of chrism, olive oil with a special perfume called balsam in it. And it was at the moment that Her Majesty the Queen was anointed with this holy oil that she became the Queen. So you are something very special. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. You have been clothed with Christ. As many as are baptised into Christ have put on Christ. May God, who has received you by baptism into his church, pour upon you the riches of his grace, that within the company of Christ's pilgrim people you may daily be renewed by his anointing spirit and come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. Amen. Amen. Now, let's applaud her. So now Father Robert's going to lead us in some intercessions. Please feel free to return to your places.
So please, if you wish, uh, sit or kneel as is comfortable for you during prayer. In this time of Lent, we are strengthened on our journey by the transfiguration of Jesus. Nourished by God's word, we recall our needs before the Lord. Abraham is our father in the faith because he believed in the promises of God. May we too be faithful in our covenant with God, putting our trust in God's love seeking always to do what God wants, what he calls us to do. Let us on this day pray for Jemima and her parents, and for Elian, Clementine, Josiah and Esther. Let us pray that this small child will always be mindful of the grace of God she has received today. Let us pray for those who will nurture her in the Christian faith. That God will give them courage and wisdom. Lovingly to raise this child as a servant of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for a desire to follow the law of Christ eager to live as Jesus commands. And by our prayers and by our fasting during Lent, may we honor the cross of Christ, imitating the one who died, that we also may have life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And let us pray for ourselves and for Jemima and her family that they always take delight in the presence of God. Peter, James and John were filled with joy in the presence of God. Let us pray that the child and her family may be always joyful in the Lord, seeking God's company in prayer and reflection. Let us dare to ask for this gift for ourselves, that experienced as we are in the ways of the church, we may be always open to the freshness of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And let us away from this parish pray for the peoples of Ukraine and Russia and all those affected by conflict throughout our damaged world. Let us pray for innocent victims of violence, for those who, because of others' actions, have little or no food, no running water, no power to heat their homes. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for the sick, for those known to us, for those in care homes, for those who are nearing the end of their life, for those harmed in any way by armed conflict, for those who feel a sense of shame, in particular for Orthodox Christians in Ukraine and in Russia, finding that two large Orthodox communities are at war. Let us pray for healing for sick people and for their salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have died, 
We pray for members of our own family who have died, for the benefactors of this church, and for those whose anniversaries fall this week. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Now let us complete our prayers by greeting the Blessed Virgin as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Please stand. We are the body of Christ. By one Spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up the common good. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We share the peace with each other. And now we join in the Offertory Hymn, which is number 339, 339 in the Green Hymn Books.
pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For in these forty days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer, and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hearts to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless your mercy and a join with saints and angels forever praising you and singing holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice, with praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, of John the Evangelist, our patron, with the apostles, the martyrs and all the saints, May praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God Father, and so in confidence we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the Kingdom. The power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you see that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hymn number 337. 337. down for a moment. Yet another reminder that the worship of God is only perfect in heaven. And what's the difference one digit makes? I do apologise, but actually I did have 337 on my little list here. So please stay for some coffee uh, straight after this service. And then uh, I'm, I'm, I'm called to invite you all to the vicarage to, as it were, wet the baby's head. So you'd be very, very welcome after coffee to come and have a sandwich and a glass of wine. Um, this evening our Lent course continues. Dr. David Wolfe is going to look closely at the icon of the Annunciation, the first of the festival icons. So I encourage you to either come to that or to look at it later in the week. It will be available uh, via the internet. And all other services this week are as before. Uh, every Tuesday and Saturday after the morning Mass, we are praying the Stations of the Cross. So if you want to, a Lenten devotion, that's quite a good one. Uh, and if you're almsgiving during Lent, there are some boxes on the altar at the West End uh, to support the work of the Additional Curate Society, which brings priests to some of the poorest parishes of our church and in our cities. So I encourage you to give generously. Let's stand for the blessing. The Lord be with you. 
May God give us grace to grow in holiness, to deny ourselves, to take up our cross and follow Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come down upon you to dwell deep within you this day and forevermore. Amen. And there remains one symbolic gesture to do with the baptism. Can, can I ask you, Dominic and Jenny, to bring Jemima forward, please? And if you turn to the yellow cards, there's a, there's a bit on the second side of this called the giving of a lighted candle. So what we do here is to light this candle, Jemima's candle, from the pastoral candle. The pastoral candle is the symbol of the risen Christ containing the five wounds of his cross. This is for you. This is for you. Who will be with me? With your daddy. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in light. You have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Give me a seat to the next 